Thank you now for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that we are learning about the Holy Spirit and him working in our lives. He's the one that brought us to Jesus. He's the one that convicted us that we were lost and undone and we needed to be saved, that we had no righteousness of our own. And he convicted us that we needed righteousness and which we have because we got the righteousness of our Lord and we thank you. He taught us about the judgment to come. And we want to thank you for that. We thank you, Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives all through the week. May we be conscious of you working in us and leading us and directing us and guiding us and even showing us things to come. But we have to be aware of him and how he works. And I pray, Lord, that I can uh, teach this lesson in a way that people can understand and cooperate with the Holy Spirit and Lord, it's so exciting when we walk with the Lord, when we live in the light. It's so exciting to have that, that life in me, in, in us, that resurrected life. God, how precious that is. And I'm enjoying that in my old age. And I thank you for it now. I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation would rest upon each and every one of your people here today. That the light would turn on inside and we can comprehend, as Charles says, what the Lord is doing in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Can everybody hear me okay? Am I coming through on this mic? Am I coming through? Yes, sir. So-so, need to come a little louder? No. A little louder? No. I'm fine, fine over here, back there. Okay, I want you to hear me. I, when I talk, I like for people to hear me. <laughs> There's no need for me to stand up here and open my mouth if, I, if you don't hear me. Because how many of you know faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God that I speak. All right. First scripture I want to put up on the board. And we've been talking about how God works. And that, that, that is so important to know how he works. And he is still working. Yes, he saved us. You can't get no more saved than you are right now if you've trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior. In the death and the burial and the resurrection of our Lord. But we need to be more aware of the Holy Spirit living in us. And he's been given to us to teach us. He's the real teacher. I am not. He is the real teacher. We speak the word, but he teaches you and me what God wants us to do. And how we can change. And he has the power to change us from glory to glory. Amen. All right, let's start with uh, John 16, verse 7. And we'll put that up on the board. Hallelujah. St. John 16, verse 7. It's so exciting to, to study about the Holy Spirit and have that fellowship with him. I want to remind you that Jesus Christ is in heaven, seated at the right hand side of the Father in his resurrected body. There is a man seated at the right hand side of the Father, and that is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now his spirit, Christ's spirit, has came down, and when we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we accepted his spirit, Christ's spirit, into our hearts. The Bible says Christ in our hearts is our only hope of heaven or glory. So we get that settled. Now, the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit of Christ, when you see in the Bible, the Spirit of Christ, or the Holy Spirit, it's only one Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So he operates in us through his Spirit and through the Spirit of Christ. Now let's read this. And Jesus <coughs> is talking. In fact, I'm going to back up one verse. You don't have to change it, but I, I'm going to say it. And Jesus is speaking here. He said, but now I am going to him who sent me, going to him, the Father, and the Father sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? Verse 6, but because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts, taking complete possession of them. Now, the, the disciples were people just like you and me. They were flesh and blood. They had no more power than anybody else. 
Years ago, when I read and I studied about the life of Christ and I went through the scriptures, I found that everything that Jesus did, he did by the power of the Holy Spirit. You must understand that. He, has, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. A full measure of the Holy Ghost was given unto Jesus Christ to do his work down here. Okay? Keep that in mind. And the only thing he could do was what the Father told him to do. And he only did what the Father told him to do in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now he left his glory in heaven when he came down here as a man. So he had to totally depend upon the Holy Spirit. Now I want to say something to you. And I want to sort of wake us up and understand that we must learn to walk in the Spirit. We must learn to hear the voice of God. We must learn, if we're going to do anything, we're going to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't muster it up. I don't care how much we know. You can't muster it up. Either God's going to do it through you, or it ain't going to get done. Now, we can do a lot of things on our own. And a lot of those things will be good. They might be dead works. But we have a certain amount of power to do certain things. But there are certain things we can't do. <clears throat> so we have to learn to depend upon the Holy Spirit. Now, the disciples were sad because Jesus said, I'm going to leave you. I'm going to go back to the Father. Well, they felt abandoned. You know, well, my goodness, what are we going to do? I don't feel like i got any power to raise the dead like you did, Jesus. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm going to go. Because I'm going to send the Holy Ghost down here. And he's going to come upon you and he's going to empower you to do even better things than I've done. Wow, Jesus. <laughs> All right, now let's finish this. Now we're going to start in verse, I can't see that verse there. What verse? All right, 16, 7. Here we go. However, I'm telling you, now Jesus is speaking, nothing but the truth. Everybody say, I want truth. I want truth. If we accept a lie, we'll be in deception. I want you to hear something. If the, if, if, if the Holy Spirit tells you you have sin and you say you haven't sinned, then you're going to be in deception. Are you listening? I want truth. Grace is there. If you have sin, don't say you haven't. If you say you haven't when you know you have, but you don't want nobody to know and you won't even admit it yourself, then you're going to be in deception. And how many people have just keeps that attitude and they got all this deception built up in their lives as they go down in through and grow older and older and older. So we have to make sure that every day we're clear from all deception. If you sin, God is there. He's not there to beat you over the head. He sympathizes with us. We have a high priest that sympathizes with us. We have a high priest that understands everything about us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows every hair upon your head. He knows the number of it. He knows everything. He sees everything. So don't be in deception to think, well, I won't admit it. That way God won't know what I'm doing. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're doing. He knows what you're not doing. He knows what I'm doing and not doing. All of us. So you can relax and know that God loves you. And if he convicts you of a sin, just say, thank you, God. You, you, you told me about it that I don't have to answer at the judgment seat about that thing. How many listening? Keep yourself up to date. And when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we won't have to answer a lot for a lot of things. <laughs> now, don't shout me down. <coughs> Are you up to date? Yes, sir. What do you have in your life or what do I have in my life that you are saying, well, that, 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 that's not me. And when you know it is you. But see, you're so, we're so scared of being rejected. God has not rejected us. He saved us. We're his children. We were born again by the Spirit of God. And it's by the Spirit of God we're going to grow. We're going to mature. We're going to grow up in Christ in all things. That's what the Father wants. How many fathers and mothers do we have out there that want your children to grow up? Come on. Oh, boy, that boy. My goodness. 
Hallelujah, I'm sick and tired of paying his bills. <laughs> Can anybody identify with that? <clears throat> so, okay, now remember that. Now look what he's saying. Look what Jesus is saying. However, I'm telling you nothing but the truth. When I say it is profitable and good, expedient, and advantage for you that I go away. Now, how many of you know he had to die before he went away? How many wants life in here? You say, hey, you want really life. Okay. What comes first, life or death? Huh? Y'all said that weekly. <laughs> death! Death! God uses death. You plant a garden and let that seed die, it, it abides alone. It's got to die and release the power that's in it. Come, someone says, I need more power. God will bring you into areas that you're going to have to die. You won't always have to have the, the last word. Come on, Bob, preach it. I believe it will. <laughs> you won't always have to have the last word between you and your mate. Quiet in here. Death. That's why Paul says, oh my goodness, if I could just die, I could get out of this mess. And be with the Lord. Absent from the body. Present with the Lord. I want to ask you a question. How many eat, uh, you know, the old days we didn't have all these pecans you could buy at the store. You actually had to break the shell. How many would throw the meat away and eat the shell? What? You break the shell, throw it away, and eat the meat. All right, that's what God's after. He's, he, we're spirit beings. We're spirit beings. And you wonder, why am I so rigid and I'm so, have all this problem? Why, 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 why? Because you are fighting death. Just go ahead and submit to God. Let him kill you and get it over with where you can have some life. Now, Bob, you, 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 where'd you learn that? Uh, I'll learn it through life. <laughs> Always buried about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Christ might be manifest in these mortal bodies. <laughs> the very thing that'll set us free, we fight. Now, bring it down to practice. Something practical. There's my wife. I tell Susan, well, I just ain't going to do it. <laughs> she dies to that, and she'll say, whatever. <laughs> How many of you would come out fighting? No, I don't want to see. What well, I want you to do, I, I, oh my goodness, you're going to live in that misery all your life. Always buried about. Where? That we talk. In the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that also, that the life of Christ might be manifested in these mortal bodies. No one likes to die from their own opinions. Well, it's my opinion, Brother Bob, that I think, would you just die to that and watch the life of Christ come forth? Well, if I was in charge, this is what I would do. Oh, my goodness, I know what you'd do. You'd probably been dead a long time ago. Do you realize I'm 83 years old and I got life in me? I mean, I could shout it out. I gotta calm myself down. I'm so full of the life. Because I've allowed the, the, the cross to cut. I, I died to my opinions. I died to what I think. I died, but I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm dead indeed under sin. But I am alive under God through Christ Jesus my Lord. That ain't just words. That's real experience that we go through. 
But we don't understand. We don't comprehend it. And uh, I've had people say, Bob, what makes me like this? <coughs> well, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, turn to your Bibles now. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, <laughs> and let's read this through, see. See, God's ways are so far beyond our thoughts. His ways are not our ways, and our ways are not His ways. You've got to find out what His way is. If you're going to walk in the Spirit, if you're going to obey the Holy Spirit. Now listen, I, I, how many love me in here? Three, that's not too bad. <laughs> you know I'm going to speak the truth because I love you. Thank you. Calm down, Bob. All right, listen to this. We want to find out about the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said, it's expedient that I go. Now, how many of you know now, I want you to see something here. Now, he, meant he had to go and die at the cross and, and to go to heaven. But how many of you know it's expedient that we go? How many is catching that? Okay. That we go. That we let our opinions go. That we let our ideas go. We let what I think go. It's expedient that we let our self-life go. That we might live by the Spirit of God. How many understand what I'm talking about? Raise your, don't raise your hand if you don't now. Go over. How many understand what I'm saying? All right, the next time you are in it, you will be put to test. When your good deeds are spoken evil of, we, we, we know some of us know about that. You're going to start throwing bricks through the window. See, the natural mind, the natural mind does not understand the wisdom of God. That's in the scriptures. His ways are not our ways. Our whole society strives to be the most educated. And I'm not kicking that. We strive to be number one. And yet Jesus said, and the disciples did the same thing. Lord, would you come into your kingdom? Can, uh, can I sit on the left side and, and, and Brother John on the right? Boys, you don't know what you're asking. He had to correct them. I tell you what, who will be the greatest among you? Somebody tell me. Amen. He that will serve. Oh, man, that goes again. I would have to die if I believe in that philosophy. <laughs> I want you to know my wife and me started out in the, in the church cleaning the floors, cleaning the bathrooms, cutting the grass. Whatever needed to be done, we did it. I never tried to be a pastor. Never. What is a pastor? I don't even know what a pastor is. I'm just me. We started out at the very low, and God did the promoting. The most horrible thing in the world is to see somebody striving to be number one. But see, that's our society. Is that not true? We have our special football uh, teams and, oh, they're going to be number one. I understand all that. I'm not kicking that. I mean, if you want to, you know, I used to like to see them, you know, run after that little pig skin and kick it over the, uh, shout hallelujah. Not kicking it. Of course, not promoting it either. But I mean, <laughs> how many love me? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, we want to be on the win winning side. And God says uh, to the boys, now, if you want to be uh, number one in the kingdom, you've got to be willing to be a servant of all. He says, I, Jesus said, I've come not, not to be served. I've come to serve. serve. Amen. 
So Jesus is saying here now. Let's finish that. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, the strengthener, and the standby will not come to you into, notice this, into close fellowship with you. Are you, now be honest, you might not even, never heard this. Are you fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit every day? What is your experience when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? What do you do when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit? I'd like to know. i tell you one area, a couple of areas, you'll be praising the Lord just about all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be thanking God for His goodness and His mercy. You'll be thanking Him that He's empowered you to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. <laughs> you get all excited. You want to tell everybody... <laughs> That Jesus Christ is Lord. You're just so in love. Man, when I fell in love with my wife, I woke up this morning with Susan on my mind. I woke up this morning with Susan on my mind. Every day I'd wake up with Susan on my mind. I'd go to bed with Susan on my mind. All during the day, I would have Susan on my mind. Come on, church, it's been so long for some of you. When you fell in love, you can't even remember what it felt like. Well, I'm 83 years old, and I still got the vibrations inside of me. Woo, 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 woo. I woke up this morning with, boy, when she wakes I love in the morning when she wakes up. When we wake I ain't going that way. Anyway, <laughs> I get in trouble. But you see, how much is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, filling your thoughts during the day? Are you thinking about what somebody didn't do or what somebody is doing? Well, what are you thinking about all day? Who said hearty burgers? <laughs> French fries, iced tea. See, if you're going to follow the Holy Spirit, you will be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And when your mind is renewed, let me tell you what you will think about it. And you'll find this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, somewhere right in there. You will think on that which is good and honest and noble. You'll be thankful for who, what you got. Your whole thinking, see, facilities change. And therefore, that's how we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. You cannot... Think worldly thinking and worldly stinking That's right. and expect to walk in the Spirit. Somebody say, ouch. Oh, that's a good one. Well, that's all right. Be honest. Because if, 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 if we don't admit that we have sinned, if we really have, if we don't admit that, we're in deception. Do we understand that, church? Church? You're in deception to that degree. Yeah. See, I, I honor the Holy Spirit when he says, Bob, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. I was a foreman at the air base. And I would tell this person, all right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go over there and I want you to work on that cowling over there. A cowling, which is a piece of the, it goes over the engine of, engine of the aircraft. And, okay, okay. I, I did this other, I, I, I just... Well, I come home and I choose him. He's working down in the yard. We're raking the leaves and everything. I say, Susan, I want you to get the wheelbarrow over there. I want you to come over here and rake all that up over there. Put it over there. And I want you to do it right now. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Holy Spirit speaks. Bob? <clears throat> yes, Lord? You had the authority. You were the head. You're, you're the one that is the organizer in this. And you spoke truth. You spoke truth. But you did it as a foreman at the base. And you don't treat your wife like that. Because you see, if you don't treat your wife right, your prayers ain't going to get answered. Yeah, but I'm a deacon in the church. I don't care if you're the pastor. If you don't treat your wife right, God ain't going to ready answer your prayers. 
Somebody say, I love you, Pastor Bob. I, I, you're, you're pushing me, but I, I want to still love you. Yeah, that's what God will do. He'll push you to the point to find out really what's in your heart. <laughs> and so what do I do? Cover it up? I'm in deception. Then the next thing you know, I do another thing and it builds up, builds up. And all of a sudden I wonder, I feel, why do I feel this way? I don't got no joy in my soul anymore. I feel so bad all the time. Now there's other things. You might have been eating too late at night or a pizza too. You know, that pizza will get you dreaming and, back and all kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> no, you know what I got to do? Keep myself up today. I come over to Susan. I say, honey, put the wheelbarrow down. Don't hit me with that shovel. I mean, put it down. What I said was right, honey, but I spoke to you not in a loving way. Anybody been there besides me? Huh? You want me to run that by again? How many have ever been there besides me? Come on, confession is good for the heart. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> Honey, would you um, pour me some more tea? What's wrong with you? You got two legs? Pour it yourself. Well, that's true. I got two legs. I could have gotten up. But what's her attitude? The servant heart. In fact, I don't even have to ask my wife. Because when she sees the tea gets bound out about like that. <laughs> she'll do that right back there. Those that eat back there. Come on, church. Let me in a little bit. See, how many want to be great? The greatest among you. Who will be the greatest among you? He that will become a servant and let God do the promoting. Because I'll tell you one thing, you promote yourself to a place and you're not going to be spiritually, mentally, physically able to be able to do what you need to do in that position and your health will go, every, your spiritual life will go and you will go, boom, you will fall. But when you let God raise you up, and run you through the contract machines. How many knows what a contract machine is? How many knows what a coffee grinder is? How many knows what one of those grinders you put meat in and you, it makes hamburgers? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't know God had one of those? Well, it might be your next door neighbor. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Good to see our sister. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for our sister today. But see, when you start looking at some of these things that you have to face and certain people do certain things against you, it is to stir and see what is really left into you. Now, you may fail the test a little here and a little there, but after a while, everybody look at me. I'm over here. Woo look at me. How many of you know life comes out of what? Death. Death. Yes. I tell you, I, I, I would really like, I wish looks would come out of death. I'd look, I, would look, I would just look wonderful. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? And yet we fight and we don't yield to the Holy Spirit. If you know the word, well, Lord, I don't understand this. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts because you're still in these human bodies. But I know that God will cause good to come out of it. You know, because he says in his word that he will cause good to come out of everything. Everything that comes our way because we love the Lord. We might not understand it. But we love the Lord. Okay, now. That has to take place. Now you're ready to hear the voice of God. All right. Sometimes the voice of God is loud. 
That's in Psalms 29, 5. 29, 5. Psalms 29, 5. Sometimes it's a loud voice. You might hear it with your physical eyes. Maybe not, I don't think so. How many of you know when Paul was converted, there was a little sound there, but they didn't understand and hear it. Or however, I'm to, well, Psalms. Well, we won't be able to check every verse, but let's check. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, yes. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. Well, I say that's a pretty loud voice. <laughs> if, maybe if we've been deaf so long, you might just have to have said it like an earthquake. Yeah. Boom! Lord, I heard it. Nobody else might not even heard it. But you heard it. Yeah. And boy, when you hear the voice of God, it changes you. Brings obedience in your life. So, he can speak loud. All right, we won't change all the verses, but I'll say them if we write them down. He speaks to us a still, small voice. 1 Kings 19, 11, 18. You don't have to turn there. Let me just share just a couple of times that God spoke, has spoken to me. This building is here. This land is here because God spoke to me. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. When Susan got bit by that snake, three years ago or four years ago, I forgot now. <clears throat> we found out the snake was living under the house because he came out one day and I saw him, he saw me and he went back under the house. And I'm not telling you every detail because of the time element. So Susan and me who had been shopping, we were coming home and I said to Susan, honey, I want you to touch and agree with me that the Lord will show me where that snake is, where I can kill it. And she, we prayed, and we touched the degree. Right, two weeks later now, two weeks later, and uh, Frank was talking about the timing. Okay, I want you to see the timing. Sometimes the miracle is in the timing, okay? So I'm over at my office. I have my little golf cart. I travel around here in my little golf cart. And so I'm over there, and I just come out of the building. I lock it up. I, I have my, that snake is not on my mind. I'm just was over there worshiping, praising God, and I got in the golf cart, and I come around and out on the road, and come right down here at the road to where my land starts. God spoke. Here's what He said: Go across the lawn and look for the snake. Go across the lawn and look. And look for the snake. I didn't question him. Now, Bob, was it a loud voice? No, it, it's just you hear, you know that you know very clear inside of you, in your spirit. Your mind interprets what your spirit is sensing and what it knows. And that's the way you hear it, just like that. Bob, go across the lawn and look for the snake. I turn the golf cart, I go like this, like this, and I go right to the back of our house, and right like this. And there's a snake right there. Right there, snake. Look at the timing of that. Why would this? Miss James, it's only a rubber snake, honey. <laughs> the timing. The snake is there. I go, I obey. How many believe that was a coincidence? See, the timing. We had already agreed that God would lead me to find that snake. He spoke to me, and I obeyed and came right up on a snake. And I have a paddle in my golf cart that I used to beat my children with. In love, of course. 
I just kidding. <laughs> Strike that, okay. No, Susan took care of that. So anyway, I get out of the golf cart. And I said, Lord, don't let me miss him. And I, I killed him. So he won't bite my wife no, long, no more or nobody else because he ain't there. Now, that's just one little simple thing that as you walk with God, you don't strain at it. You just walk with God in the spirit and he does all of that. When he thinks you need to know something, he'll let you know. But you need to listen and understand that he speaks today and he'll speak to you. So, everything was precise. The timing, everything just right. Now, I'm going to share one other time, one other time that the Lord spoke to me. Years ago, it was back 30, 40 years ago, I forgot now the years. But God had spoken to me to build a pulpit. So I built a pulpit, put it in the front room. Now, what am I going to do with a pulpit in my front room? I don't got no congregation. That's silly, isn't it? Build a pulpit. All right, let's see what Jesus did. (sighs) David, can can you come up here, a demonstration, or you feel up to it, son? Or you want me to call on your dad? (laughs) Brave man. All right, here's a young man. Say, he comes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, heal my blind eyes. Heal me. Now, I want you to see how logic this is, really logic. It takes the dirt. <coughs> puts it in his eyes like that. Now, wait a minute. I'm already blind. And you're putting... Mud with your spit in my eyes, Lord? This is not logic at all. No, it's not logic. See, you, 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 you well, I, I just got to understand. You ain't going to understand. Obey. Now, son, I want you to go down to the little pond there the, the, uh, and, and, and dip, just wash, wash your eyes out and come back and tell me what you're doing. Or you can wash it up, wash it out, it comes back. And then what? What you got? You can see? Wow! Give the Lord a hand. When the Lord speaks, it ain't going to always be logical. You must understand. Pull it, build a pulpit. Put it in my front room. That's not logical. Susan had a something with the, with the ladies, and they all came to the house, and they walked all around that pulpit. Nobody said one thing. <laughs> and they left. Whether they saw it or not, I don't care. <laughs> but can you realize the guy down there is 6020 Meadowcliff Avenue, built a pulpit, and he don't even have anybody to preach to. Boy, he must be nuts. Yeah, you're right. Nuts for Jesus. Had no idea what God was going to do. But you see, obedient this step, and then the next step, God will bring you along, and now he's going to speak to you again. Most of you don't know, but Alice back there and uh, her two children at the time was the first congregation people that God brought to the house. Yeah. That young lady back there, Alice. Small kids like that. In one year, God filled out a house with 70 people. And we never asked one person, one person to come to our time that we were in the house. And Susan would fix dinner for everybody and God would multiply the food. Yeah, multiply. We never gave out of it, did we, Mom? In fact, I had to eat some of it the next day. God multiplied. That's not logic. No, I ain't talking about logic. I'm talking about God. God that created the universe. God that speaks. 
you read your Bible and you'll see what God tells people. Gideon, you're going to deliver Israel. Well, Lord, <laughs> see, see, I'm the least in my father's house and, you know, I'm, I ain't nothing. I know that's why I'm going to use you. Because I like to take nothing and make a man of God out of him. And it won't be your labor, it won't be your good works, it won't be your education. It'll be the power of the living God that takes nothing and makes something out of it. Well, it wasn't too bad, Gideon. I think it was 32, was it 32,000? It was 32,000, I think, that, uh, that came. And, and, and boy, I mean, that's not bad. Uh, your church grows to 32,000. <laughs> boy, this is great. I'm really wonderful, ain't it? And all they all leave and you got 300. Oh, we've had all these chairs full. We've been, you'll find it's like it goes down and like this sometimes. It goes down. Some people we send out, they're in ministry. That's okay. We don't worry about numbers. God don't worry about numbers. Why, well, he can take and speak to those rocks, and those rocks can uh, be raised up and praise the Lord. Amen. So forget about wh wh what you see. We don't look at what we see. We look at what we don't see. For that which is spiritual is unseen. But what you see is temporary. You have up and downs in your life. It's okay when you're down. Be, yeah, it's okay. God is God. When you're down, God is God when you're up. God don't become more, no more God when you're up. He's God when you're up. He's God when you're down. He's God when you're right and you're God when you're left. He's God. He's God. He's God. It was God. It was God. It was God. It was God. Our faith is to be in what God can do. Tell them, Miss Campbell. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's get rid of all that other stuff. Clear our mind of all the garbage. Thy will be done. If it looks little to us, so be it. If it looks big to us, so be it. You don't worry about that. You just sow the seed, you water the seed, but it is God that gives the increase. So you can relax. That's what Hebrew talks about. There's a rest. You can rest. You can rest. But you're busy. But you're busy in a rest. You can worry if you want to. We still have a lot of lots out there. We can bury your body in. I mean, you, you, you'll leave before the rest of us because you just worry yourself to death. Everybody say, I've been there once, but I ain't going that way no more. Let me tell you what happened to me. I had an anxiety attack. I thought I was having a heart attack. I'm ended up in the hospital years ago. Because I was going to do everything. I was going to save the world. Billy Graham II. Hallelujah to the glory of God. Well, I ended up in the hospital with anxiety attack. Boy, when you have one of those things, it's like you dying. And I did. That's why I'm free. <laughs> I gave it all to Jesus. I gave the world to Jesus. He was running this thing before I came on the scene, and he'll continue to run it when I'm in heaven. Yeah, but you don't know nothing about uh, raising kids. You, you want to hear my experience of raising kids? And half of the neighborhood? Kids? But, say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free just to hear God. Okay, I got to move fast. I got 20 more hours. Here we go. All right, I'm just going to move here. Sometimes you'll hear the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will make real or seems to illuminate you. You just it illuminates your mind, it, it, your spirit. You just, it seems like that's what I ought to do, okay? There's times 
He'll guide us by the scriptures. Very important. He'll guide us by the scriptures. Inward knowing or deep knowing. You just know that you know that you know that that's the way you're to walk. You just have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. You just know and you walk, just walk that walk. You walk that walk. <laughs> God can speak every day. If you stay in the Word of God, you will get all the, all the voice of God you could stand, actually, by right here in the Word of God. I, I want to say something. Not that I have not been saying something, don't get me wrong. But those early Christians and all those hundreds of years, they didn't have the Word of God like we have it. Are you listening? They didn't have the Word of God. They didn't have heat and air conditioning. They didn't have comfortable chairs and carpet on the floor. They met in caves. They met in the synagogues. They met under trees. They met wherever they could. They didn't have the Word of God. I'll guarantee you if you'll expose your spirit to this Word and just start verse by verse, read a whole chapter, the next day another chapter, Re read all of the book of Ephesians, come back and read it again. Come back and just do that. I'll guarantee you, you'll grow, you'll hear God's voice, God will speak to you, and when He does, you write it down on a piece of paper. Everything I have is on a piece of paper that God has spoke. I don't preach trying to figure out something in the scripture. I preach revelation knowledge that God gives me. Amen. Yeah, I don't have, when I first started out with, oh, what am I going to preach about? And I get up, preach about five minutes and fall down. That's it. But now I can't shut up. I'm just so loaded with the word of God. Every day, Susan and me spends time in the word of God. I teach my wife, she teaches me. We teach one another every day. Verse by verse, we... Tear down every verse. We look at the, the words. We tear it down. Life comes. Life comes. Jesus said, my word is life and peace. It's spirit and life. And all of a sudden, out of this book, the carnal mind is just words. But when the spirit speaks to your spirit, it comes alive. And that's how you, be, you get that energy, that strength. You just, I mean, sometimes, Susan, you ought to see Susan around the house when she's, I love it. I say, come on, baby, let me see a little bit more of that. Man, she's just praising God, hallelujah. Then I got to get in on it. How to do, da, da, how to do. Y'all don't do that? Y'all don't do that? Well, what's wrong with you? Huh? You, you don't do that? <laughs> come on, I'm teaching you. Just, just hallelujah, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, I bless the Lord, oh my soul, the other day I was walking with Jesus. The Holy Spirit said, where are you going? I said, I'm going wherever Jesus leads me. Boy, you do show you want to do that. Oh, yes, I want to go. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Woo, 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 woo. Well, hello, congregation. I didn't realize y'all were still out there. Yeah, that's part of walking in the Spirit, living in the Spirit. Get rid of all that negative stuff and get happy. Get your house filled with the power and the Spirit of God. Let the Word of God just go all over the place. I tell you, if I, if I had my way, I would just, my whole house would be covered with the Word of God. My office over there, we got it, you know, put it everywhere. I got it back there, but I'd just like to put it all in the Word of God. You just, the whole Bible would be right there on the wall. That's not logical, Bob. I know. I know. We're not talking about logic. Look where logic has gotten you. Not that we throw our brain away. But Gideon, getting back to Gideon, he won the battle with 3,200 or 32,000. No, he won it with 300. 